Hey everyone, Pastor Schoen here, just uh, continuing our Holy Week devotions. It's Tuesday today, so we're going to look at something that happened on uh, Tuesday of Holy Week in Jesus' life. And um, I'll, I'll start by kind of walking you through what all happened, what Jesus did, and then we'll have our little devotion at the end. So, if you remember, Jesus on Monday cleansed the temple, and it was a big place, big deal. And the religious leaders, they weren't too happy with him, and you can imagine why. And so what do you think Jesus did next on Tuesday? Well, he went right back to the temple. We call Tuesday Teaching Tuesday uh, because Jesus taught from pretty much the morning to, to late in the, to the near end of the day, I should say. Um, he taught the whole time in the temple. And he taught the religious leaders. He taught the people who were there. He was teaching and, and he said some strong words. Uh, because he was trying to call them to repentance. And I'll explain that in just a second. This is kind of the things that he talked about. So as he stood in the temple, he the religious leaders kept coming back to him to try and trap him, to trick him, to use something against him, to condemn him, right? And Jesus taught as he did. He taught with parables. Um, and he taught parables that were very clear, though. A lot of times, Jesus in the past, his parables weren't as clear, but these ones were very clear. And the religious leaders, they knew that Jesus was speaking about them. And so he taught uh, a parable about two sons, uh, one who said he was going to do the Father's will, one who didn't, but then eventually did. And he's talking about the repentance, about how the, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, they, they originally said no to the Father, but now here they are coming to Jesus. He told a, a parable about a wedding feast and how everyone was wearing the same wedding clothes, but one person didn't. And how that person didn't have the wedding clothes. He thought his own clothes were good enough. And we learned that we need the righteousness of Christ, not our own works. He talked about paying taxes to Caesar and how we pay taxes to Caesar and we give to God. He talked and taught about what happens in eternal life with the resurrection. He told this interesting story to people who didn't even believe in the afterlife um, called the Sadducees. You can always remember that. Sadducees are sad because they don't believe in eternal life. There you go. Remember that. He talked about love. He talks about um, who Jesus is. And then he gets to this section where he is teaching. And, and finally, um, he says to the crowds and the disciples, those around, he says, and he proclaims what's called the, the seven woes to the Pharisees and the scribes. And these seven woes, you read them and you're like, whoa, these are hard words to hear, Jesus. And he calls the Pharisees and the leaders, he calls them a brood of vipers, whitewashed tombs, the blind leading the blind. He, he says these strong words. And as you read, it's pretty much Matthew 21 through Matthew 25. Uh, you read these words, you, you say, Jesus, these are, these are tough words to hear. They, these are strong statements. You're not pulling a punch here, Jesus. You're letting them have it. This was Jesus' last day of ministry where he was able to teach. And he spent the whole day teaching at the temple where everyone would be, right? And he did so because he wanted to call these religious leaders and those around to repentance, to draw them to him and to see him as their only hope of salvation. After he gets through these seven woes and before he goes and finishes the day teaching just his disciples about the end of the world and judgment day, he has this lament over Jerusalem where he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who, who are sent to it, how often I, have long, I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. In other words, Jesus wanted them to be in his family, but they would not listen. And so he spoke hard words to crush their hard sin uh, hard hearts of unbelief, and to bring them to repentance. As we read these words, we know that Jesus spoke them to the Pharisees and the tax collectors, but we also have them written and there for us. And so we too can learn from them. And so the section of scripture for the daily prayer today comes from the very beginning, the morning of Jesus' teaching. And it's when he enters the temple and, um, and the Pharisees and the leaders come up to him and they say, what authority is going on? Why can you do these things? Uh, and this is actually what they say. By what authority are you doing these things and who gave you the authority? So Jesus answered them. I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, John the Baptist. From where did it come from? From heaven or man? 
As they discussed it amongst themselves, they saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither then will I, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And then he goes on to teach all those parables and the woes. The devotional thought I, I had reading this section is, I too challenge Jesus' authority like the Pharisees did. I, I maybe don't do it as openly as they did, but as I hear his word, I, I kind of want to put myself above it and say, well, this, this doesn't maybe really apply to me. As I hear his word, I don't listen with a humble heart, but with a heart that tries to tell God what to do. As I hear his word, sometimes I, I flat out reject it because I don't like it. And so when I hear Jesus speak hard words to call these people to repentance, as he reminds them that God is a God of love and mercy, who sent his son to forgive the world, it leads me to, to see my, challenging authority, my, my challenges to his authority and to repent. But then I know he does it in love because he wants to gather me under his wings, just like he said about Jerusalem. And he teaches me about his love. He teaches me that his word is there for my good. He teaches me uh, to look to him alone. And we do this Friday, and we do this Sunday, and we do every day. But especially this week as we see him dying and rising on the cross. So that's what happened Tuesday. And you'll have to come back to find out what, happened tomorrow, what happens tomorrow on Wednesday. But as we close, we'll close with prayer uh, based off of our daily prayer today. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for teaching us and speaking to us, even when it's words that are hard to hear. Far, uh, too often, I, I challenge your authority, not openly like the religious leaders that you were teaching at that time, but subtly as I read your word. Forgive my challenges to your authority and help me listen to your word with a humble heart that looks to you and you alone for forgiveness and salvation. Let me be a light and a beacon to those around me to show them that your word is the truth and to listen to it, and to find their only hope in you as well. In your name we pray. Amen.